back to this part. Um, we've got a couple more of these sequences that we were doing. We're going to continue on with these. <clears throat> I think we've done an arithmetic and a geometric before we went to lunch. So let's keep it keep it going. What's going on with letter C? Is that an arithmetic or a geometric here? Yeah, geometric. geometric, good. What am I multiplying by to get to the next term? Negative three. Good. Zach, why do you say negative three? The 18th It's when you go from negative to positive, the only way you can kind of flip flop back and forth and back and forth is if you multiply by a negative. So negative times a negative gives you a positive. Then I do that positive times a negative. I go back to negative. So that's what kind of helps us go back and forth between the signs. So I'm going to multiply by negative three. Um, and I'm going to use that as my R. So let's see, we've got a geometric. And we're going to say r equals negative three. And so now we're going to plug it into our formulas and we're going to go from there. A sub n equals a sub one times r <clears throat> raised to the n minus one. I don't know what my a sub n is, but I do know my a sub one is six and I know my r is negative three. It's all being raised to the n minus one. Can I combine negative six and negative three? As much as I wish I could, I can't. I have to just leave them as they are. <clears throat> but that's okay, because now I'm gonna go find my eighth term. I'm gonna do a sub eight. I'm just gonna use that equation, negative six times negative three raised to the eight minus one. So I'm going to do negative three to the seventh. Okay, I can do this. Is it 2,087 or yeah. 2,187? Is it going to be positive or negative? Good, but then when I multiply it by negative six, then it will become positive, right? Yeah, yeah Zach, what's up? Uh, I didn't see the odd change. Why did I use a? Oh, the directions up here said a. Mm -hmm. Yep, I had to tell you. Did you hear that? Yeah. Someone yeah. screaming? Someone, someone is screaming. That was a screech. Up there, okay. All right, now I've got 13,121. That's my eighth turn. We okay with that? All right, All right let's keep it rolling then. We'll do these last two together, at least the figuring out whether it's arithmetic and geometric or, or sorry, and figuring out what the D or the R is. And then once we've done that, then I'll kind of be quiet and let you plug and chug on your own. What are you guys thinking for letter D? It's um, arithmetic. Arithmetic? arithmetic. Mm -hmm. By subtracting one half. Good. We're minusing one half or minusing 0. 0.5. I don't really care which one you use, um, but it is arithmetic. Once you've identified that and the D, you guys can kind of plug and chug on your own, right? Okay, go ahead and do that. I'll write my work up here so you can look up and see it as you go. All right, I was using fractions and then I panicked, I switched to decimals. Um, that is fine with me if you also do the same. I'm going to have 10.5 minus 0.5 n. 10 and a half minus half. End. Okay, you guys okay with that so far? 
Okay, now I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna go find my eighth term. I don't care if you use this bottom equation to solve or I'm gonna use this, the equation that I got when I first started plugging things in. That's where I'm gonna go. Either way, you should get the same answer as I do when we go find a sub eight. If you're doing fractions, I got 13 over 2. If you're doing decimals, I got 6.5. Does that sound good to you guys? All right. Anybody questions so far? All right, let's hit the last one of these. What's going on here? Arithmetic, ge geometric. Geometric is divided by the eight. One eight. Good. I like that you put it that way, Eva, instead of doing divided by eight. Dividing by eight is definitely true, definitely correct if that's what you want to do. I like thinking of it as times one eighth because that's going to be my common ratio. In a geometric sequence, you want your R to be in terms of what are you multiplying by to get that. My R is not eight because I'm dividing it by eight. It's going to be one over eight to show that I'm doing division. So I'm gonna use my formula and I'm gonna plug in and I'm gonna solve. Remember I like this a lot because I like that I don't have to simplify. I'm just going to leave it here until I'm ready to figure out what term I want. I want the eighth term, we keep doing that. When I do this, I'm gonna get a sub eight equals eight times one eighth raised to the seventh. Because when you do um, eight minus one or n minus one, you get seven. Now, as tempting as it is to put one divided by eighth raised to the seventh in the calculator, I wanna leave it as a fraction. I want to remember that we can distribute the seven to the one and to the eight. <clears throat> so we're going to keep it as a fraction. One to the seventh is just one, but eight to the seventh is going to be a huge number. I think that's 2,097,152. I know that's a large number, but you also can see if we can simplify. I know that eight goes into both of these. And I know that even though that's a huge number and you're like, how do you know eight goes into that? Well, we just did eight to the seven. So I just did eight times eight times eight times eight times eight times eight times eight. So I can at least take one eight out, right? So that's gonna be one. And then this number divided by eight is going to be 200 or yeah, 262,144. And I would like us to just leave it as that fraction. The eighth term is going to be one over two, six, two, one, four, four. <clears throat> <Okay. clears throat> Anybody concerns on what we've done so far? All right, the last four problems are all the same type of problem. On these, I gave you the first term and the common difference and you found a missing term. Now I'm gonna give you like a missing term or a random term and we need to find the common difference or ratio and we need to find the first term. Okay. What I'm thinking about here, if you turn the paper over, it says find the first term of the arithmetic sequence where um, a sub four is negative eight and a sub seven is four. I'm gonna write an equation for this. I'm gonna write an equation for this, and I'm gonna use my um, knowledge of systems of equations to solve those, okay? So let's start, I'll do the first one. <clears throat> this one right here, a sub four, they said that that is negative eight, okay? 
That's going to be equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We don't know a sub 1. We don't know d. But I argue we know what n is. What's n going to be? What number term did I give us? Four. The fourth term. So that means I can go a little bit farther and simplify it. So negative eight is equal to a sub one plus three C. <clears throat> we okay with that? Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the other equation. The other one says a sub seven equals four. So then I know that four is gonna equal a sub one plus n minus one times d. Well, what's my n for this one? Negative eight. Nope. Seven. seven. We're in the seventh spot. A sub seven. Seven goes for my n. So again, I'm going to simplify that. That's going to become four equals a sub one plus six d. 6D as a variable, not 6D as a number. <clears throat> All right, now I think um, when we're doing arithmetic, I think it's most simple to um, simplify using elimination. So if you multiply one of the equations by negative, that's gonna cancel out the other pieces. So if I multiply the top one by negative one, that's gonna make it become positive eight, negative one um, sub or a sub one minus three D. And my bottom equation is going to stay the same. When I combine them, my a sub ones are going to cancel. Eight plus four is 12 and negative three plus six is three. So 12 equals three D, D equals what? Four. <clears throat> D equals four. All right, now what? Is that what I wanted? Am I done? No, you want to find the first term. Okay, so how do I do that? Um, you're going to use the D in the equation. Plug it in? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Plug it in. I don't care which equation you do. I'm going to do the top one, so I'm going to do the blue equation. Negative a equals a sub one plus three times d, and we know d is four. Hmm. Negative a equals a sub one plus 12, minus 12 from both sides, I get negative 20 equals a one. That's okay, that just means we started at negative 20. That's a fine thing to do. We could technically start anywhere. Why don't you look down on your paper, look at letter C, because that is just like letter A that we did. It's still arithmetic. Why don't you try letter C on your own, since this is still fresh in our brain? Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's a nine, right? I can't tell the one. Is it a nine or a six? Oh, a nine. Okay. Yeah, my other class was asking me that, and I was, and we were being confused as to what they were talking about. Yeah, I would say a sub five equals negative five, and then a sub nine equals negative seven. Let me start pretending to work with you guys. <clears throat>
Got my D on the board. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. Is that what you guys got? Okay, awesome. And then go ahead and plug it back in when you're done. <clears throat> And then I got my a sub one to be seven. Does that look good to you guys? All right, we got two more problems of the same type. They are geometric, which is just a little bit funnier. Um, but we're still gonna solve it the exact same way that we did the last one. We just have to now use our geometric form, okay? So my first equation is gonna show that a sub two equals three. Okay. A sub two equals three. So my geometric form now goes a one, times r raised to the n minus one. What's my n this time? Two. two. So that means if I were to simplify it, the only thing I can simplify is that two minus one. So I can say three equals a one times r. Okay, let's do the other one. a sub eight equals 192. So I'm going to raise it to the 8 minus 1. So 192 is going to be equal to a sub 1 times r to the 7. Unfortunately, I don't think elimination works very well here. I think substitution works a lot better. I think it's easiest if you take the number with the smaller exponent and get that one, get that a sub 1 by itself, and then we're going to plug in. So I'm going to take this top number, top equation. If I divide by r on both sides, I get three over r equals a sub one. I'm gonna take that three over r and plug that in for my a sub one. <clears throat> so that means 192 is equal to three over r times r to the seventh. Now I wrote my R like kind of big and kind of high. Remember that that's the same thing as R over one. So when there's no denominator there, give it a denominator, that kind of helps keep things in order. Because now I have an R to the seventh on top and an R to the first on bottom. I can cancel that R on the bottom and what's left on top? R to the, if I had seven and then I take away one, I'm down to six. <clears throat> so now I've got 192 equals 3 times r to the 6th. Can you divide by 3 on both sides? I got 64. And then you can always go in your calculator and do 6 root of 64. I think I know what number that is. I think it's 2. Um, and you can also guess and check like two to the six gives us what? Three to the six gives us what? Four to the six gives us what? You'll find it pretty quick. Yeah, Charlie. How did you get the exponent of the six? It was seven and it was on top and I had an R on the bottom. So when I had seven on top and one on bottom, I take away one from each and I'm left with six on top and zero on top. Am I done? Plug it in. We want the first term. So I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take where I just left off with my a sub one. a sub one equals three over r. Well, r is two, so a sub one equals three halves. Funky, but that is okay. 
We're gonna do one last one together. We're gonna do letter D. Are you ready for that? Okay, right, let's do letter D. It says the geometric sequence when a sub three is equal to negative 75 and a sub six equals negative 930, um, 375. See if you can set them up just like we've done the last three, and then we'll talk about combining them together. You get the same two equations as I did. We're going to do the same thing we did last time. Find the one that has a smaller exponent for my r. Get that a sub 1 by itself. So a sub 1 is going to equal negative 75 over r squared. So we're going to go plug that in for my a sub 1 in my next equation. Okay, now just like the last time, my r to the fifth is like over one. So on the top, I've got r to the fifth, and on the bottom, I've got r squared. I can cancel them out and get left with r to what power? r to the third. And that's all going to be in the numerator, negative 75, r to the third. There's no denominator. Go ahead and divide, let's square root, all that fun stuff, or cube root. And this is actually one I know too. The cube root of 125 is five. So R is five. We done? Plug it in. A sub one equals negative three. Okay. How are we feeling? Good? Okay. That is all I wanted to get through today. I'm not sure if there's more of nine four that I want to do, so hold tight on that.